Hello everyone, I'm Melanie Young from Raising Real Men and Craftsman Crate. The holidays are my favorite time of year. I love the excitement of decorating and being with family and the special food. Hal and I decided a long time ago that we wanted the holidays to be a time that we would build memories with our kids that would attract their hearts toward home. So one of the things that we've always loved to do is to decorate in Williamsburg style. Now, in the colonial days, people couldn't just order a wreath from online, obviously. And so what they did is they used natural things in their community to make decorations. They made spectacularly beautiful, classy decorations. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use trimmings from Christmas trees to make, um, to make a wreath and to make a garland to go over the end of our porch here, okay? Now... The cheapest way to do this is to go to Lowe's or some other place that sells Christmas trees on a Saturday afternoon and say, hey, can I have your tree trimmings? Because when people buy a tree, they'll get it trimmed, get the last couple of branches trimmed off so that it fits into their tree stand. And most places will give you those for free. And so that's a great way to, to get free, perfect, perfect greenery to do this. You can also go collect it from trees in the woods but it's really low stress to go and get tree trimmings from a place that sells Christmas trees. Um, take your own garbage bags to collect them. What you will also need is gloves because pine trees and um, evergreen trees of all kinds have very, very sticky sap. It's tar and pitch. Remember that they used to rub them on the outside of ships to keep them from leaking and so it's super sticky and it's really hard to get off things and so you want, to get, you want to get some gloves for you and your kids. You also want to get a cheap plastic tablecloth. I think we paid a dollar for this one. And it's great to do it out on a porch or something so you don't get it in your house. Um, so cover your work surface with a cheap tablecloth. Get some gloves. And kids love to do this because working with the natural stuff, I don't know, is a whole lot more appealing to them than dealing with a bunch of sticky, um, pee artificial stuff. So... What you want to do first is you want to look for some long, straight branches. Some thick, reasonably thick ones. So like this, all right? And we're going to, we're going to connect them together to make the base. You don't, you don't even have to have a wreath, um, a wreath form. I don't use one. I used to, and I realized I couldn't make the wreath the right size that I wanted with the, with, since I didn't have a wreath form, so I decided to make my own wreath form out of the tree. So you're going to need that. You're going to need some floral wire, and you can use gold. I love gold. Or you can use green, so it blends in and you can't see it, or black. And let's see if we can see what... This is 26 gauge. This, the gold is 22 gauge. Anything that 22 to 26 gauge is going to be fine. And where are my nippers? You're going to want some nippers, okay, and something to cut your wire with. And if you're a horrible person like me, you often just cut your wires with your nippers. That's really bad for them. It makes them dull. You can also swipe out of your husband or your toolbox um, some wire nippers that have a wire cutter placed down at the bottom. So you need something to cut the wire. You're going to need some thick ribbon to go at the bottom. And you're going to need some fruit. Now, I just happen to have oranges today, so I'm going to use oranges. I like to use limes and lemons. Um, apples are really beautiful, especially if you can get a really bright apple. A uh, dark red apple doesn't seem to, it seems to fade into the greenery. You don't see any bright red. And the fruit adds color and richness and, um, and it's traditional. So let's get started. First, I'm going to get my wire going. And y'all, I'm doing this all live. This is not pre-prep where I'm going to show you what I made later. We're doing this live so that you can see how long it takes and what's involved. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to clip the wire off yet, okay? But I'm going to get, you know, about a mm, foot, foot and a half loose. I'm going to take two of the, of the fairly straight branches and I'm going to overlap them some, maybe about halfway, okay? I'm going to start up here where it overlapped. I'm going to wrap the wire around. And it's all right if you squeeze some of the greenery down because this is kind of the base. Okay, it's not going to show very much. 
So I'm going to keep going until, and just wrapping it around and around until I get to where the bottom of where these are overlapped. And again, don't be afraid to stick the little branches down because that's just going to give more heft here to the base, okay? And your goal right now is to make a base. This is not the pretty part. So now I'm at the bottom where it, the bottom of this one is, I'm going to look for another one to add to it. Pretty good size branch. That looks good. And I'm going to start where the other one ended and add another branch. I'm going to keep them going the same way, though, so tops all the same direction, okay? I'm going to start winding this and adding this in. Now, once I get about three of them, I'm going to think, whoa, how big do I want this thing to be? All right. And I'm going to bend it around to see what kind of size circle I have. That looks pretty big, but when you put it together, mm, that's not big enough. We need another one. So I'm going to add a another branch. I'm going to overlap again some. So that I'm building up a nice, strong base for my wreath. And I'm going to test and see, is that big enough? Mm, not quite. Let's add another one. So here's strong. Huh? I know. But my mic's right here. Are you having any trouble hearing me? If you are, then let me know, okay? But I've got the mic lying down on the table because it's a little hard to balance here. I need another straight branch. Oh. Um, when you're pulling branches, oh, could you cut a couple of these off for me? When you're pulling branches off the bottom of the tree, occasionally you'll pull, pull one off that just is beautiful. And it has a beautiful fan shape. And that's a great thing that you can, it's a very simple decoration. Here's a really pretty one. It's just a really pretty fan shape. And you can put that up on the back of your piano or on top of your bookcase or even behind a picture frame. And that makes a really easy decoration that is zero work. <laughs> okay. All right. You got another straight chunky piece for me? That one would be good. Okay. If you don't have any that look really strong enough, you can take one like this and mash it together and make it stronger. Okay, that's what I'm going to do with this one. And so I'm continuing to wrap, and then I'm thinking, this is probably going to be about the size that I want. Now, you may notice that what I've got here is a garland. Okay, so if you're going to make a garland, it starts the exact same way. But for a wreath, then I'm going to bend this back and overlap. And you're thinking, wait, that's a weird shape. Don't worry, you're going to get it, you're going to get it right. And then I'm going to keep wrapping. And get it tightly connected here. Just up. So this is going to be the foundation for our wreath. And you want any sticking out parts to be strapped down with your wire. It's pretty tight. This is gonna. This is basically your wreath form. And what do you do next? Okay, next you're gonna add the foliage to the leaf to the wreath. And I'm gonna start down here where it's skinny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather a bundle of small sprigs and a handful like this, okay? I'm just going to grab it by the bottom. I'm going to lay it on top of the wreath here. You see this? And I'm going to wire it down. Go around a couple of three times. Then I'm going to get another bundle. And if you see any that's brown or it just doesn't look good, just throw it aside, okay? But you're going to get another bundle of stuff here. A little fistful. And this time. I'm going to lay it on top, just 
slightly overlapping on top of the last bundle. Okay. Now, don't worry about it being perfect at this point. It's really lightweight wire and I keep dropping it. I think next time I'm going to use a heavier gauge one. Let's see. You're not going to worry about it being perfect at this point because you're, you're a long way from finished, okay? And don't worry at all about the bottoms of each bundle looking perfect because you're covering that, you're going to cover those up, okay? So I go around several times. Start a new bundle. Can you gather some bundles together for me, sweetheart? That'll make it a little faster for these poor people who are having to watch me. One more again. And you'll figure it out. You know, you'll think you'll figure out about how much you want in each one. Now this one, I've got one piece that's just way longer than the others. I'm just gonna you cut him right here. Okay, I'm just gonna cut him off put another piece there at the edge where he was cut, okay? And you want to keep going the same direction. You want all your tops to be pointing the same direction. And just lay the top of each new bundle on top of the bottom of the old bundle. Thank you. And while I'm continuing this, let's talk for a minute. Um, we are being super, we are super busy right now. As you may know, we have a lot of Christmas giftable stuff. If you have, if you have a branch that just seems to stick out a weird direction, feel free just to strap it down with the wire. And that way it'll add to the fluff, but it won't, it won't be sticking out on, over to the side or something. Perfect. Another little bundle. And I'm laying it right on top of the bottom of the last bundle. I'll turn this around just a second so you can see what it looks like now. And any like ends and ends and pieces that are sticking out from like the base, I've got a little bit of wood here sticking out. I'm just gonna tight tightly strap down. Now notice I haven't cut the wire at all yet. The wire's just going around. So see, I have the top part of the wreath added and the bottom not yet. And I've got a few pieces I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. Some of them you're going to bend down, some you may come back with a little wire and strap them down. Okay. Some more so that we can make bundles out of. So what are we doing right now? We are packing Craftsman Crate. This month's Craftsman Crate is really cool. It's really cool. New subscribers are going to get the wood burning set. And one of our daughters used one of our patterns this year. And went first place at the state fair with her wood burning. And the continuing subscribers this month are getting stained glass. It's a faux stained glass that you can make very inexpensively and without having to you know, solder lead. And we've got some gorgeous patterns I'm really excited about. There's a um, cardinal and holly and a uh, um, hummingbird. It's really pretty. While we're doing this, if you have any questions about Craftsman Crate or any other, th other things we're doing, I'm glad to answer your questions too. Craftsman Crate is our subscription box. I guess I was just assumed you all know that. It comes every month and teaches a new hobby every month. And so kids learn, kids or adults, we have elderly subscribers, learn how to do new things every month. And it's all sorts of things from soapstone carving to... Um, to basketry and wood carving and wood burning and mosaics and globe making and all kinds of stuff. We um, are also sending out a lot of rubber band guns and audio books. And our character building audiobook library is on sale right now. If you want to find our holiday sales, you can go to raisingrollmen.com slash holiday2021.
We're making really good progress. We're about three-fourths of the way around this wreath. Hold it up so you can see what we've got so far. Isn't it pretty? This smells heavenly. It smells so good. We're going to add another little bundle of greenery. And again, place the just place the old bundle on top of the bottom of the, the new bundle on top of the bottom of the old bundle. So that everything's going the same direction. That's what keeps it from looking all weird. That's what keeps it looking natural. Because ideally, a wreath should look kind of like a garland that's biting its tail. This should be a garland that goes all the way around. Now, if you'll see here, I had a piece of wood just kind of sticking up. And I just grabbed it tight with the with the wire and pulled it down flat. Okay, we're almost done with the, the wreath. Have a few more bundles to put on here. Now you may be thinking, okay, well, what do I do when I get around to where I start it? What you're going to do when you get around to where you start is you're going to lift up the top of that very first bundle you put on, and you're going to wire the bottom of the last bundle there. I think we've got one more before we get there though. Okay, you got a bundle for me? Almost, you're almost back there. And now I'll show you how to attach the fruit. More bundle will do it. So I lift up the first bundle that I put on there and I slide the last bundle up under it and then wire it down. Ah! Gosh, I need to wrap this back up a little bit. I can't handle it. going to wire it under the top bundle, making sure that you don't um, wire the, the that top bundle down, the very first bundle. You don't want, you still want it to be fluffy and sticking out. All right. Now, when I get that much done, what I'm going to do is I want to find a piece of wood on the back and wrap this wire round and round it so that it is tied off and won't come loose. And I tied, where's the wire cutters? I'm going to tie the wire to the wire in a second. I'm going to stick the wire underneath the wire that came from the front. And this is pretty durable, so don't worry about handling it, okay? And then tighten it in and around this little branch. Make sure it stays plucked. Now, we have a wreath. And what you're going to do is you're going to go around and shape it, okay? See how what the shape looks like. Adjust it anywhere that needs to be adjusted. If you think, oh, that needs some more... I need some more greenery there. You can stick more greenery in it and wire it down. But it makes a wreath that just smells. Oh. And the thing about it is it's going to smell great down on your front door all the time. Every time you come in or out the front door, you're going to smell that amazing evergreen smell. So let's talk about how to add fruit. Now where's that gold wire I had? Because that's a little bit stepper. Oh, do y'all see it? Ah, okay. So you, for, to add fruit, you're going to need wire about, I like to make about an 18-inch piece, okay? Now, the 22-gauge wire works better for this than the 26-gauge, but the 26-gauge will work, okay? So 
it just goes torn by floor wire. Now what you want to do though is you want to get it the end of it completely straight for about six inches and you're going to have to work at it a little bit with your fingers to straighten it. If it bends at all it won't go through the it won't go through the fruit properly so I'm working to get it straight as straight as possible and particularly the end okay so straight piece of wire I'll put it down here for you too to get closer. And then get your fruit and then hold the wire close to the end like one inch from the end and you're going to just poke it into the fruit and then feed it in and it's going to come out the other side. Magic! Isn't that cool? And then you take the fruit and you find where on your wreath you want to put it and then you just stick the wire down through the branches and around to the back and twist the wire on the back to hold it on. And so it really is as easy as all that. You'll see on houses in Williamsburg that not only do they put fruit on the brand, on the wreaths like this, but they also put fruit um, in plaques over the door and over the front of the porch and places like that. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. So see, and you attach the fruit like that. And it makes it, and it's beautiful. And you may think, would it go bad? It's cool enough in the winter, even here in North Carolina, that the fruit will be good for probably six weeks. Um, if you live in a really hot place, like we used to live in Louisiana, you might need to replace it sooner than that. But again, it's so easy to do. You just take your wire clippers and clip the fruit, the wire on either side of the fruit, put a piece of wire through a new piece of fruit, and strap it in its place. It's really super easy. Now, let's talk about ribbon. Okay, no, I was going to talk about plaques. So let's say you wanted a um, triangular shaped plaque over your door fruit. So what you would do is you get a triangular, a triangular shaped piece of wood and then stick ten penny nails in it. And where you want the fruit. A lot you could do a pineapple in the middle and then oranges along the bottom and then um, apples above that in a pyramid shape and you just slide the fruit onto the nails and it will stay there and you just gently put it up over your door and it will be fine there all winter until, until after Christmas is over. So let's see, I might have to take my gloves off to do this. Probably so. Could you get me a pair of scissors from inside? A lot of people get really um, anxious about tying bows, but it's not that hard especially if you're making a big bow. Big bows are way easier than small bows, but small bows, you have to be very precise. If it has two loops, those loops have got to be perfect. If it has a bunch of loops, then you've got, you, it can, they can go every which way, okay? So first of all, don't worry about the tails yet. You're going to add the tails later, okay? First, you're going to worry about the loops. So you're going to gather your ribbon and figure out about how much you want your, about how big you want your bow to be. I recommend a great big bow. And I'm going to just basically fold it over, leave enough tail at the end that it can be gripped. So I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to make a bunch of loops here. Is that going to be big enough? You think? Let's go small. Let's make it bigger. And we're going to fold it, just keep folding it over in loops like this. Susie, how many um, loops do you think we need on each side? Um, I, would, I would say a loop set. Yeah, you want a whole bunch of loops. You know, don't try to save money on ribbon. You'll just make it look awkward and sad. <laughs> the more ribbon, the better. Okay, that's six on this side. Six on this side. All right. So cut it off right about there, okay? Now... What you're going to do is take florist wire, all right, and cut me about a 12-inch piece here, okay? Oh, oh, sorry. And see, get your kids involved. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pinch it in the middle with florist wire. Now, you want to really pinch it. Don't try to be perfect here. You want it to fold up on itself, okay, because... 
the more folded it is and the more mushed together in the middle, the prettier bow it's going to make. Now, I am not at all artistic. Susanna over there, she's artistic. I am not. So if I can do this, I know you can do this. Now, I've got it here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out every which way, like opposite ways. All right? And I'm going to pull the... Now, if you're struggling, if you struggle with this, if you're really paring away, get some French ribbon. French ribbon has wire in it. It's called wire ribbon some places. And the wire in it will help you to adjust it and it stay that way. You want to do this one pin seals and adjust that so it's so it pushed out. Do you want it sideways or forward? Forward. You can turn it over. Then we're going to take the, um, to make the tails, we're going to take a long piece, so at least three feet, fold it in half, and I'm going to cut the, the corners at an angle. I think that's going to be much prettier when it's hanging. And I'm going to take a little bit of wire. around here, right here at the fold. I'm going to use that to attach it to the bottom of the um, bow. Now, if you want to make a garland, and I love a really pretty garland, you make it the same way that you make the um, wreath, but there's a couple of things you want to change, change up. Okay, for garland, what you want to look for, I've got to put my gloves back on, Yes, perfect. If you want a thin garland, you want to you want a bunch of long pieces like this, and you're just going to take take the wire and attach the top of one to the bottom of the other, like this. Okay. If you want a fatter gar garland, you overlap more, and so that you have more foliage. You can add little bundles too if you want. Let's say I want. A very full garland. I'm going to add some bundles when I strap it together, okay? But you start and you get and you keep going, everything pointing the same way. And you're going to think that looks weird, but it's not. It's going to be perfect. Everything going the same way, just one long continuous wrap of wire, adding new pieces, the bottom to the, the top to the bottom, until you get it as long as you want it to be. Now it's got to be longer than the length between your pillars in the front, okay? Because you want it to droop down some. And so you want to add a couple extra feet so it can droop down some, and then you want some hanging down the sides too. And so you might want to stop and measure and see, does this fit? Does this work? And maybe I'm going to add more. When you get to the very end though, you got to say you've got a long garland, and you're stuck with the ugly end, what you're going to do at the very end is you're going to get a very pretty piece, a nice fluffy piece. Let me find a pretty fluffy piece. Don't have any up here. Oh. Let's see. That's the wrong tool. When you get to the end, then you want a piece that has a pretty end on it, okay? And you just turn it the other way, and this is the one piece that you won't put the going the same way. And the last piece in your garland, you'll turn the other way so it has a pretty end on it. And that is really, really gorgeous. So we've got our ribbon here ready, and We're going to attach the ribbon with wire to the bottom of the wreath. 
you can have yours on the top if you like. Another thing you can do when you're with the same skills is make a garland. Again, it's just like making the wreath. You just take a piece and you add a new piece going the same direction. So the top of this one is, up, is at the end of that one. And make a garland about as long as your dining room table. And then take and then make a large S shape of garland on your dining room table so it kind of swirls. And if your table is long enough, you might be able to get two S shapes. For the centerpiece in the middle, we have a um, German um, a German pyramid that we got that has it has the the Christmas scene and it turns when you light the candles and everything is really cool. We use that for centerpiece. You can also build up in the middle, like use a, um, okay. So what we're gonna do? Got the the ribbon. Is we're going to put the tail, attach the tail here, and then I'm gonna bring the tail. And bring one side of the tail around so it forms the center of the back, okay? And that way the tails will be different lengths, which is prettier too, okay? And that makes the center of the bow, and then you use all this wire to attach it to the wreath. Very pretty and easy. Um, when you hang your garland on your, on your porch, every time you, and you can, all you need to loop it is some great big ten penny nails. Just nail those in the corners where you want to loop the garden gar garland. Loop the gar garland over the nails and then hang a bow at each nail. And if you only have one loop, then put two bows. Now, if you want to have it loop up and then loop again, if you have a really wide porch, then put a bow at each nail that you loop it, okay? Um, another way to do your table is you can, for the centerpiece, is you can use a um, Christmas tin or something in the middle and cover it with fruit, with fruit and foliage. You can, um, you can also use the garlands like that to make little tiny wreaths to put in your window or to, um, put, to make a mantelpiece wreath. So here's a little tiny wreath made, made by my 12 year old. And she took just some foliage, made it the same way that I did, but very, but much smaller. And she took holly leaves and spray painted them gold. It's beautiful. It's perfect. You could put a little bow in the middle too to add a little extra color. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how to make Williamsburg style decorations using free and cheap stuff. You can use pine cones, foliage, any place in your house that you want to hide. You can get those fans of, um, the bottom of the tree like we talked about and put it right there like a screen in front of anything you want to hide in your house like your stack of school books but be free with pine cones and you can spray paint them gold or you can leave them alone uh, you got a gold see isn't that pretty you can use pine cones fruit foliage just enjoy it. Your kid, my kids love decorating like this, and we do too. It smells good. It looks good. It looks super classy and rich, even though you spend nothing to using it. Um, the wire costs what? Two or three dollars. The ribbon, a couple of dollars, and um, and I'll post pictures of the finished product later. Please check out our gifts. We have things for. Guys and girls and all ages, Craftsman Crate, our subscription box that fills your skills. It teaches artisanal skills using real tools and com in, in totally complete projects. No trips to the store. It has everything you need. You can find that at craftsmancrate.com. You can find all of our stuff at raisingrealmen.com slash shop. Our specials and deals, our audiobooks are up to 50% off. So check it out at raisingrealmen.com slash holiday2021. Oh, and our holiday books, Christ-Centered Christmas, Christ-Centered Thanksgiving, um, Reformation Day, and our um, Advent devotional is it's called um, Christ-Centered Advent. It uses the Christmas carols and the verses of the Christmas carols to teach your kids about the Bible and theology. So check all those out. They're all 15% off right now. We're, we've opened up our Black, our Black Friday sale early. So go to raisingwomen.com slash holiday2021. Thank you very much for joining me. If you have questions, 
post them below and I'll, be, I'll answer them as I'm able. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may your holiday center, your holiday season, point your family to Jesus Christ and make memories that will draw your kids' hearts to home and hopefully through home to heaven. Merry Christmas. Bye, y'all.